If you're comparing these GPUs at their MSRPs, I think that the RTX 3060 Ti is the better purchase. It's supposed to cost $400. The 6700 XT is supposed to cost $480, but the reality of the situation is they don't cost their MSRPs. The RTX 3060 Ti is usually significantly above its MSRP, and the 6700 XT is usually below its MSRP by a little bit, which means if I was actually trying to buy these today and I bought the cheapest models in stock right now as of the time of filming, these GPUs pretty much cost the same. And the 6700 XT has 50% more VRAM, but it has worse ray tracing performance. Now there's DLSS versus FSR. FSR 2.0 came out. What do we think about that? Well, we better get into some side-by-side -side comparisons, but first I do want to mention that I have the reference model of both of these, or well, the reference model from the AMD 6700 XT against the Founders Edition 3060 Ti, and I personally did buy both of them at their MSRPs, despite that not actually being uh, the usual price that they sit at. But I'll give you more final thoughts at the end of the video. Let's see some benchmarks. All right, we're going to start off with Forza Horizon 5 as an opportunity to mention that I am enabling smart access memory and resizable bar for the NVIDIA GPU in this testing. But NVIDIA has chosen to go with an approach which requires them to whitelist games through their drivers, and they've never really whitelisted any games other than the initial 17 or so that they did over a year ago when they in initially launched resizable bar support. AMD GPUs benefit significantly in some games, not very much in others, and we have even seen some games where you lose a little bit of performance performance, perhaps explaining why NVIDIA wants to go with the whitelisting approach, but that's only of benefit to people if they actually whitelist games where it is beneficial, like we see here. So do keep in mind that this is an outlier. We will not normally see this large of a performance lead for the 6700 XT or this large of a benefit from smart access memory. And we'll also notice that as the resolution increases, the gap between the two GPUs does decrease. We had a larger lead at 1080p than we do at 1440p. And as we move to 4K, we see that the GPUs are actually fairly close, although the AMD 6700 XT is certainly still having the lead here over the RTX 3060 Ti. And um, we're also noticing that the 3060 Ti is trying to use up its eight gigabytes of VRAM here, although I don't notice any significant stuttering or anything seeming to be caused by pushing right up against that eight gigabyte VRAM limit. Although I did see a little stutter in the frame time graph there for a second, so it could be VRAM related. Now we'll mo move over to God of War. This is a DX11 game. And uh, AMD used to struggle with DX11 titles relative to NVIDIA, but recently had some driver updates boosting their performance in DX11. And here we see the 6700 XT with a healthy but not, not massive lead over the RTX 3060 Ti. This game doesn't have a built-in benchmark tool, so I'm just using the opening cutscene uh, in order to get us a even side-by-side -side comparison. But I really chose this game because it features FSR 2.0. It's one of the uh, first games to get the support. It also features DLSS on one of the newer versions, although not the very newest. And so we can see a head-to-head -head comparison here. So with these enabled, the performance is very similar, but look at Kratos' beard. It looks slightly less stable, especially in motion. So I do th still think the DLSS image quality is slightly better than the FSR 2.0 image quality, although it's certainly usable and a big step up from FSR 1.0. Also looking at little details like the foliage in the background, and as objects are disoccluded, meaning as his arm moves and you can start to see things behind it um, that weren't visible in the previous frame, I think DLSS handles this a little bit better than FSR 2.0. But overall, it's really nice to see AMD at least starting to close the gap with DLSS. And the main thing I'd like to see now is further FSR 2.0 support. Although we have seen it starting to be modded into games that have DLSS support um, with Cyberpunk 2077. Although in my testing, I'm not gonna use modded versions of that. So we currently only have four games. By the way, when he's standing still here is closer to the performance that you'll get in actual gameplay. Some of the scenes in the, in the cutscene are higher performance than you really get in normal gameplay. 
Now, 4K Ultra does not give us super high performance, although notice that their performance is almost dead even, maybe the slightest ed edge to the 6700 XT here, but only by one frame or so. And standing still there, it's a tie. But what if we kick on FSR 2.0 at the 4K version, once again, up against DLSS 2.3 quality? And at 4K, I think it's, it's a much closer image because both techniques have a larger uh, frame, uh, you know, resolution to work with. Even on zooming, they look pretty close. So I still think DLSS is slightly better than FSR 2.0, but it's getting close enough that it's less of a selling point for NVIDIA over AMD. Now, since we uh, hadn't looked at 1080p in this game yet, I figured we should throw that in here. And notice again that the 6700 XT has a larger lead at the lower resolutions than it gets at the higher resolutions. So that's something to keep in mind when you're targeting your monitor resolution for this GPU purchase. Now, let's switch over to Guardians of the Galaxy. So notice that in this one, the RTX 3060 Ti, even at 1080p, actually has a significant performance lead. So notice that this really depends on what game you're going to be playing. We've seen games with a large performance lead for AMD, like Forza Horizon 5, small ones like God of War, and now we're seeing a, a pretty large um, uh, lead here for the 3060 Ti at 1080p. But I really want to look at ray tracing performance because this is where you're going to really see a difference between the two GPUs. Now, I don't know why the video quality is kind of stuttery on the left-hand side there. That was not present in actual gameplay. It's something to do with the recording. Uh, but you can see performance-wise, the 3060 Ti is actually destroying the 6700 XT, although the 6700 XT is delivering playable frame rates at 1080p with RT high, which confusingly is actually the lowest RT setting available in the game. Now, this is 1440p Ultra, and you can see that the 3060 Ti is once again having a noticeable, but you know, honestly at frame rates these high, I'm actually not sure how noticeable it would be if you turned off the frame rate counter, lead over the 6700 XT in this game. Um, it actually kind of seems a bit closer, although maybe percentage wise it's similar to what it was at 1080p. Just remember the bigger the numbers are, uh, the uh, less a few frames uh, mean in terms of a percentage. Now, RT high settings here, both GPUs are delivering, I guess, playable, although the 3060 Ti is staying well above 60 FPS in this benchmark, and the 6700 XT does have dips below 60 FPS. So the ray tracing performance on the 3060 Ti is unquestionably better than the 6700 XT. Now, neither of those GPUs were using DLSS or FSR at that point. So here at 4K, we don't have any ray tracing on. But I did go with FSR 1.0, because this game doesn't feature 2.0 on the left there, and DLSS quality on the right, so you could, if you have a 4K monitor, look at the differences there. Um, at 4K, the differences are small, but DLSS does look better to my eye for sure. But again, this is the 1.0 version of FSR. And uh, neither GPU was over 60 FPS at 4K without using upscaling there. Of course, we could have turned down settings rather than upscaling. Now, in Cyberpunk 2077, we can see that at 1080p Ultra, the 6700 XT has a noticeable lead here, although it's nothing mind-blowing. It is certainly a win. Also, I want to talk about my use of Cyberpunk in these benchmarks. I would, uh, I, basically, it's still one of the highest GPU-demanding um, games out there, especially games with a built-in benchmark tool and, and that feature ray tracing and DLSS and things like that. Uh, so I like to use it kind of to, to simulate what upcoming more demanding games might be like. What kind of performance will you be getting in the next couple of years? Because I think Cyberpunk was uh, more demanding than the, the typical game of its time, giving us a future look. Although to be clear, no other games are planned using this engine. Really, I'd like to see Unreal Engine 5 performance but I want to wait till an actual game comes out, hopefully one with a benchmark tool to make life easy on us, uh, because currently, you know, we don't have a big Unreal Engine 5 uh, release to look at. Now, if we set ray tracing to the low setting, 
Both GPUs can deliver playable frame rates. Both GPUs can dip below 60 FPS, even just at 1080p RT low. Although the 3060 Ti is certainly delivering better performance, I'm actually surprised by how close their performance is at ray tracing. So one really interesting thing I've noticed with ray tracing between AMD and Nvidia is that different ray tracing workloads um, give you a different percentage difference between their ray tracing performance. If we go to um, more demanding ray tracing settings, the 6700 XT falls further behind than it does with the uh, lower ray tracing settings. But the 3060 Ti really can't go past RT low without using DLSS, which at 1080p, I would personally not use uh, just to get ray tracing effects since anything you gain in image quality from ray tracing, you're kind of losing with DLSS. Now, here's what I meant by look at the percentage difference now when we use a more demanding ray tracing setting. This is with RT reflections, which in this game, unlike Guardians of the Galaxy, there are not different gradations of reflection quality with ray tracing. It's just on or off. And the performance difference here seems to be uh, just much larger in most scenes than what we were seeing with RT low. Once again, we're not using DLSS here. And while when we're outside and there's not a lot of reflections happening, the 3060 Ti can still manage some playable frame rates. We certainly saw in the bar scene that you're gonna have some heavy, heavy dips below 60 here. And again, I think DLSS looks pretty good at 4K, pretty usable at 1440p, but at 1080p, I would use it on a low-end GPU that just needed to get some frames, but I wouldn't try to do it just to get ray tracing because, like I said, I feel like you lose image quality um, too noticeably at 1080p for it to be worth it just to then increase in image quality in a different way. But your opinion could be different than mine. Now, at 1440p, again, using this game as kind of a judge or at least a best guess at what games in the next couple of years might be like in terms of, of upper-end GPU demands, we see that both the 6700 XT and the 3060 Ti uh, struggle to stay above 60 FPS at the maximum ultra settings, again, not even including ray tracing. Whereas if we just drop the settings down to high, both GPUs deliver a very solid, very playable experience um, and over 60 FPS most of the time. Now at both ultra and at high, we do see the 6700 XT with a small but definitely present lead over the 3060 Ti um, in these games. But uh, again, I think that uh, if you're buying one of these GPUs now, remember at the tail end of a GPU generation, so we can we'll expect future games to get more demanding, and I would expect to have to turn down to high, as we're seeing here um, in the near future, if you're buying these for 1440p and want to stay um, at pretty good frame rates. Now, if we try to use any ray tracing at 1440p, we're gonna absolutely have to upscale. And even at ray tracing low and using DLSS quality as well as FSR 1.0 ultra quality, since officially this game does not have um, FSR 2.0 yet, uh, then both GPUs will still dip below 60 FPS at times. Now, one thing that was interesting to me here, again, is just how variable the uh, pr ray tracing performance is between these GPUs. We can see scenes here where the 6700 XT, probably because there's not a lot of ray trace shadows in the scene, actually seems to have a, a decent lead here over the 3060 Ti. Whereas when there's more ray tracing going on in the scene, I think that's where we were seeing the 3060 Ti have the lead. But it's really interesting. This, this is where I, I don't think percentage graphs just I think they hide more than they show in terms of which one's better at ray tracing. Well, the 3060 Ti is better at ray tracing, but it's not as simple as saying a certain percentage it is better by. Now, how about which one's better at 4K? Well, in Cyberpunk, we're certainly seeing that at 4K native resolution, I had to go down to medium settings in order to get anything like a playable frame rate at native 4K. And by applying FSR Ultra Quality or DLSS Quality to the 4K medium settings, we're actually now getting uh, 
probably closer to what I might actually use if I was playing these uh, this game at 4K on either of these GPUs. Now, interestingly, the 6700 XT is delivering better performance even at the native 4K uh, than the 3060 Ti, despite the fact that the Ampere architecture does tend to scale up to higher resolutions a little bit better. Now, I don't think that's due to its eight gigabytes of VRAM, uh, just looking at the amount of VRAM, because uh, with the medium 4K settings, the 6700 XT isn't even allocating a full eight gigabytes a lot of the time. So I'm not saying it couldn't be VRAM related, but it, it doesn't appear to be given the numbers that we're seeing here. Now, let's take a look at Red Dead Redemption 2. So starting out at 1080p with the maximum preset, so that's just taking the overall favor quality versus favor performance slider um, and sliding it all the way to the right for favor quality. We're definitely seeing a lead here for the 6700 XT, and it's um, you know not a massive lead, but is certainly noticeable. But both GPUs are delivering a very good maxed out 1080p uh, experience here, so I don't think it, if you're playing the game you would uh, complain about either one's performance or even be able to tell the difference. Now at 1440p, the 6700 XT still has a performance lead here, but both GPUs are once again delivering very good uh, overall performance, and I think you would be quite happy with using both of these GPUs maxed out at 1440p in this game. Although certainly um, there are more demanding scenes in the game where frame rates will dip a little bit, I think you would be very rarely under 60 FPS and averaging well above 60 FPS most of the time with the maximum settings. However, if you try to use the maximum settings at 4K, one thing that's interesting here is that the 3060 Ti, once again, is kind of closing that gap. The Ampere architecture stretching its legs a little bit um, compared to AMD's uh, RDNA 2 architecture at the 4K resolution. So they're pretty much tied, although occasionally one GPU is one or two FPS above the other one. I think the 3060 Ti more frequently being the one that's one or two FPS up. But neither one is really delivering performance that I'd be happy to play at. So let's switch it to the hardware unboxed optimized settings. So the hardware unboxed YouTube channel uh, did a fantastic series on this game optimizing the performance, uh, turning down some settings for massive performance boosts with very little loss to image quality. And you can see here that now both GPUs are performing much closer to 60 FPS, although the 6700 XT at 4K with the settings turned down actually has a performance lead, which I thought was extremely interesting. I thought these head-to-head -head comparisons were absolutely fascinating. It was really interesting to see both GPUs taking the lead in various scenarios, although certainly in the suite of games that I chose, uh, it did look like the 6700 XT had the advantage in almost every situation that did not involve ray tracing. I was also on that note uh, really interested to see that while the 3060 Ti always offered better ray tracing performance, um, at the lower ray tracing settings, the 6700 XT wasn't being blown out of the water as badly as it was when we turned on the more heavy ray traced reflections in Cyberpunk. So uh, I think it's really gonna depend on the game and the exact ray tracing settings, um, how much of a lead the 3060 Ti has. I don't think it's easy to classify just by a certain percentage. And on that topic, I really wasn't blown away by the ray tracing performance of either GPU, which means uh, for me personally, I don't think I would factor ray tracing into my purchasing decision here because I think I'd prefer the higher frame rates on offer uh, from both GPUs when I didn't have it turned on, which might sway me toward the 6700 XT in a lot of cases. So overall, I think for straight up gaming performance without a heavy emphasis on ray tracing, the 6700 XT did prove that it's the better choice here. Although with prices fluctuating all the time, um, I, I will mention that on the most recent couple weeks of Best Buy drops in the US, where you can get your Founders Edition uh, 3060 Ti's, it hasn't been super difficult to get a $400 3060 Ti in your cart, which would make it cheaper than the 6700 XT. 
GPU. So I would say that if on the day you're planning on purchasing, one of these GPUs is significantly less expensive than the other one, that that's probably the one to get unless there's certain features that you really care a lot about. I think the biggest standout differences here uh, between them, other than ray tracing performance, is, well, upscaling, but that's getting to be less of a big deal with FSR 2.0 at least giving close to DLSS performance, although currently its game support list needs to grow, but we're certainly very early on there. So down the line, that could be less of an issue, but currently I would still give up upscaling uh, both image quality and game support list a, a, a win to NVIDIA there as well. And the other place where you might get swayed towards the 3060 Ti, despite having on average slightly worse performance, is in the feature set outside of just gaming. So NVIDIA does have a better encoder for live streaming, which means that at lower bit rates, the recordings will look a little bit better, like the bit rates you would use when live streaming if you're using your GPU encoder to run your live stream. At higher bit rates, I actually captured all of the footage in this video on each GPU's encoder through its own driver software, and I thought both of them looked good. I actually feel like there's some slight color grading differences on the encoders. Now, some people read way too much into this and think that that means the GPUs actually produce a different image when you're playing the game, which I do not think is the case. I believe it's just the encoders operating slightly differently that are leading these slight differences in the color grading of the recordings that you're seeing here. So do keep that in mind if you're trying to say that, you know, AMD has better colors than Nvidia or vice versa. Now, the other thing you might want to think about is if you're G using your GPU for productivity, there are certain applications that have just been programmed to work better on NVIDIA GPUs, probably due to their larger market share, uh, than they are on AMD GPUs. And if you use one of those programs, and I'm not going to go into an exhaustive list of those, look into it if you use certain productivity apps that rely on GPU acceleration, uh, to see what its support is for NVIDIA versus AMD, because in many programs, they will um, run better on NVIDIA GPUs, and if you need that for work, that's going to be pretty important. So uh, I guess my final conclusion here is probably buy whichever one's cheaper. <laughs> if they do cost the same and you just care about straight up gaming performance without a big emphasis on ray tracing or upscaling, the 6700 XD does seem to be the better choice as well as having more VRAM, significantly more VRAM, which could end up being a factor in very specific games or in uh, future games as we go down the line. We've never seen having more VRAM be a downside as, as you go down you know, th uh, years into the future <laughs> with your GPU choice. So, um, but if you are swayed by some of those extra features on the NVIDIA side, I certainly don't think that grabbing the uh, 3060 Ti instead uh, would at all be a bad choice. But really, guys, this was really interesting. Um, and I've got to say, I think both GPUs make a lot of sense depending on your personal preference about various features, upscaling, ray tracing, um, and um, just, just maybe have a brand preference or loyalty as well. And that's fine. Buy the GPU that makes the most sense for you. Um, I'll be comparing the 3060 Ti up against some other GPUs like the 3070, probably the 3060. We'll see what else in the near future. So stick around if you're interested. I hope you have an excellent day.